Ich sehe, hier kommt es. Deze zin werd plotseling een hit. Hij kwam zelfs op de top 10 terecht. En dat voor klassieke muziek. Ja, Don Upshaw speelt alle grote operarollen in alle grote operahuizen. Uh, ze heeft heel bijzondere liedrecitals en daar ga ik straks met haar over praten. En ze was hier uh, deze maand uh, vanwege het... Uh, Vokaal festival wat in het Concertgebouw in Amsterdam werd gehouden. Ze heeft daar uh, Pierrot Lunaire van Schoenberg gezongen... met het uh, Schoenberg Ensemble onder leiding van Reimert Leeuw. En ze gaf ook een recital waar ik dan bij mocht zijn. En uh, dat was een hommage aan een zangeres die ze zeer bewondert... en die vooral in de twintiger jaren erg bekend was, Jean Batory. Um, en... Er is nog iets heel leuks. We gaan straks luisteren naar een mini-masterclass. Uh, daar hebben we natuurlijk mensen voor uitgenodigd. Dat is uh, de zangeres Tania Cross. Die zit daar met haar pianist Ernst Munneke. En u zult straks zien hoe daar een masterclass ontstaat met een klein prachtig stukje Stravinsky. Good morning, Dawn. Good morning, Hans. So nice to have you here. Um, I was... Uh, at your recital, and I, I was so happy to be there. But you, you at the end, you said um, when you for the encore, um, you said um, to the audience uh, in the hall, "I'm. It's a gift to sing here in this wonderful hall and to to sing for you. But for me, and I think for the whole audience, it was a gift that you were singing for us. Such a wonderful evening. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, um, you." We are here for an hour and I, I'm sure that that hour is too short. But um, people who watch us, they expect you to sing, but you don't do it. You have, you have your principles in, uh, on that, isn't it? I'm afraid so. If we had scheduled this on some other day, other than a day following a long recital, um, I would be happy to sing for you. But I have to be very careful about how much singing I do. And it's different for every singer, but for me, I have at least this one rule that I don't perform the day after a, a big, heavy concert. And that, that was... And that, I consider last night's, oh, just yes. in terms of its length and what it required of me, both emotionally and physically. Yes. Yeah. Um, I told to the audience um, that um, the concert was, the, the recital was a um, homage, uh, as we say, to Jean Bathory. Um, how did you trace her? Can you tell something about her? Well, it was a surprise, really, because I was looking for a program of 20th century French music. And in fact, I was looking for music probably written rather recently. Uh, but in choosing a few pieces from earlier in the century, I kept coming across the name Jean Bathory. And my husband was helping me quite a bit in looking for repertoire, which he does often. And so we decided to try to find out who Jean Bartori was. And it was very inspiring to read about her and learn that she really worked hard to present pieces of her, the composers of her own time and working with composers and premiering so many pieces. And so I thought that it might be interesting to center the, the, the entire program around the wonderful work that she had done. That there, there was a lot known about her or was she very no, a very well-known singer, and a famous singer in, in, in her time? I think that she probably was pretty well known uh, earlier in this century and then um, for the French. I think that if you found someone in France now who was going to concerts in the 20s and 30s, 
that they would remember the name Jeanne Batory for sure. She didn't sing just new pieces, but she also sang opera. And she often accompanied herself in concerts. She did. Uh, yes, and um, you know, I think that that takes a lot of courage and obviously a lot of talent I think uh, to so. be able to do that. Um, and also later in her career, uh, she presented young singers, young professionals in concert series uh, that she herself put together. Uh, so I just thought that this was rather unique because it was, seemed like she was sort of living her career uh, in order to um, highlight other people, you know, either composers or young singers and uh, music that people hadn't heard so often. There are recordings. We have one, we found one recording, but you, you told me that there is a, is a whole uh, recording of, of, of hers with, with yes. a whole, whole CD. I believe it may even be a, a two CD set, but there's a company in the United States called Marston, and they have just released a Jean Batory disc. Because it's always nice to, to hear that voice, and then you go back to that time. We can listen to, to a little part. Here, here, here she comes. Actually, I've heard her on disc before, um, on, on, on this Marston CD that I was talking about. Uh, and she introduces every piece, you know, very <laughs> nonchalantly. Yes. And there's something ab about her singing, too, that's no nonsense. No, you know? that, that's it's true. A, and the text is so clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really yes. wonderful. You, I you, think you, that probably that was um, of great importance to yeah. her, obviously. There were, there were famous words. composers uh, who she premiered, isn't it? Oh, yes. Um, it's a long list. I can give you some of the names. Um, Poulenc, Debussy, Ravel, Roussel, um, Honegger. Yes, and, but and I, I think also Taillefer and Kirchner. And Taillefer and Kirchner. Kirchner is not so famous, but you, you, that, that song of Kirchner <gasps> is, yeah. Enfise uh, et <laughs> Um, this is a song that creates such a mood from the beginning of the piece, and it's uh, of languor and uh, comfort and warmth, and it's just um, speaking of a moment of two lovers sitting together enjoying nature and not saying much to each other. And it takes a good four minutes, I think, at least for the whole song, but... Uh, yeah. That, that is something that, that I think, um, speaking of, um, of moods, that, that's difficult to do, isn't it? And, and, and you, you have so many songs, also in this recital. Mm. She had, I think, the same problem to have all... Have you, have you seen a program of hers? What she yes. performed? Yes, or and her? sometimes um, well, she had quite a combination of styles herself and often too she would share the program with either the pianist who is playing um, or maybe some other singers or other instrumentalists so that it was not a completely no. an evening solely of song that was in that time that was normal isn't uh, yeah it? it's yeah. much more common more than it common is today than not, no, no not yeah. anymore um, is there any resemblance uh, with uh, Jean Batory and you? Oh, I I find you her. You have chosen her. <laughs> <laughs> I, she's an inspiration for me. I, you know, I think that this was such a lucky surprise um, to come across her name and to find out a, a bit more about her. Um, I admired what I admire what she stood for, what she seemed to have stood for. And, 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 and 
think she stood for the composers in exactly. her time. Exactly. The, 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 the new composers. I and I, I enjoy working with composers myself, um, and I hope to always make that a, a major part of my, my work and my career. One part in your career is uh, singing opera. Mm. Uh, is, is there a special repertoire what you like the most? Mm. I like variety in my life in every way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's special, I, um, I seem to, well certainly Mozart is one of my favorites. Uh, and, and I also like contemporary opera. I seem it kind of bunches up on either end with not much in the middle <laughs> in terms of well, um, the, the, the styles and the periods. But, um, and certainly Stravinsky, Rake's Progress, I enjoy very much. And that will come uh, at the end of the program in, 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 in our little masterclass. Yes. Uh, we have images from the Nozze di Figaro. Well, talking about Bernard Haitink, who was uh, horn here not so long before you. Um, let's let's watch these uh, images. Never seen that. Ne before. Never seen that before. Yeah. Yes, it, it was an, a portrait of hiding, yeah. and, nice. um, and which conducted uh, the Figaro. Um, yeah, wh what is the difference between performing a recital and doing an opera role? Mm. Well, first of all, the demands for the recital are, I think, greater. Greater. Just because of um, the jumps from one emotion to another very quickly. Uh, there isn't the same kind of continuity of no. character. Uh, there isn't um, the interchange you know, with your colleagues that sometimes not only is, is very interesting, but um, gives you a little bit of a break. <laughs> so I find the recital more exhausting. But I probably prefer, if I had to make a choice, luckily I don't have to make a choice at this point, <laughs> but if I had to make a choice, I think that I would choose to sing recitals uh, because I like the challenge of creating all those different characters yes. and moods in one evening. In one evening. On uh, the other hand, um, you have the scenery and there is, uh, what do you say in English? We say regisseur, it's opera manager? Opera director. Opera director. Mm -hmm. And that's the one who says you have to do and do this. 
Well, if you're working with somebody who says you have to do this and this, then you're in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, well. But what's, what's wonderful is working with a director that is a true colleague and someone who, of course, has his or her own ideas and vision about the piece, but also works with whatever they've got and, and doesn't um, try to force any ideas on any of their singers. And I think he must love music. Yes, that's just, no. Well, we, we, one would certainly hope so, but you're right. It's not always. I the know case. a Dutch conductor. I, I won't say his name. He, he worked with some uh, opera directors, and he said, "He, these guys, they don't love music, mm. and they they just do do what they have to do, and I'm doing what I have to do. That's not good, I think." There, there are some directors like that, but of course there are many directors that no, But you were lucky music. to work with Peter Sellers. Yes. Isn't it? Well, yeah. Peter is um, actually probably one of the most musical directors I've ever worked with. And I think that he's probably even more of a musician than many of my colleagues. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> uh, there's uh, uh, such an understanding of every piece that he works on and such a reverence that he really has for the music. Um, uh, he's also incredibly generous to work with. We have some generous. images and you are rehearsing their piece of Messiaen, isn't it? An opera. Uh, you have from St. Francis of Assisi. Yes, yes. and okay. here is one wonderful moment of the two of you together. Mm -hmm. It's just my feeling that like the washing of the hands got a little tight mm. and not as, as generous as they might be. Mm -hmm. Particularly like the underneath just felt a little like, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> okay, now where's your face? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, just, <laughs> I know you do that with your kids, but here. <laughs> So here, here we're just just a little more, a little more spaciousness and a little more sense of the generosity of the gesture that it's just tender. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's not just like a cheese grater that you're using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's beautiful. There. Just be there. Just beautiful. Thank you. Peter, I don't even, I don't even want to hear anything if that's all right. You just let me. I actually just want to say a few things. Though. Is that okay? <laughs> we're gonna, on. we're gonna have the most beautiful experience with this scene. We're gonna um, heal it completely. Heal it? Mm -hmm. oh. It's gonna be really your like favorite scene. <laughs> no, no, it is. I really mean that. And it's like this time we just totally have to earn this one, and it's okay, actually fine. What happened there? You, you were a, a little unsure, or what was, it? what was it? Oh, we were rehearsing a certain scene in St. Francis that was giving me a lot of grief vocally. It was very difficult to sing, and... Um, we had done this opera seven years earlier, and then it was revived. And it wasn't quite, that particular scene was, was more difficult for me um, seven years later. So uh, I was struggling and Peter was trying to help me forget my technical problems and put my emotions into it. And he did it in a wonderful way, I think, isn't it? It's just such a nice... Well, we have a very close relationship, and I think... Yeah. Uh, um, that's opera. Um, now, back to the song recital. Um, you said it's, it's, that's harder to do. 
um, more difficult because of all those moves. Uh, perhaps for the, the people who watch us now, the audience, it's good to have an example. Um, let's first listen to a little piece of sati. Mm -hmm. And I will watch your reaction on that. Here it comes. Well, that's a very silly song. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the audience was laughing also, and that's also your way you, you acted there. It's, it's a kind yeah, it's of a, it's a kind of nonsense song. So it's a lot of fun, and of course, musically, all of those the the jokes and the humor we hear it in the music, and it's yeah, easy I, to. I think in the play. recital you started with me, yo. That was that 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 was not funny at all, and then mm -hmm. came the sati. At the end, uh, there was the BBC, the BBC, uh, I think, and Ravel. Mm -hmm. um, let's listen to the BBC now. Yeah. Because, well, one of the things that is most important to me as a performer, there are many things that are important, but uh, is one thing is vulnerability. To always try, at least, to risk something. And that song is all about risk. Um, talking about trembling from just the love one feels for someone and not wanting to step or on it or ruin it or and so to find the right color um, is very it's 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 a wonderful challenge to try to let yourself lose control a little bit enough to make the point and that was happened at the recital when I was there. I think it actually was audience. more successful at the recital than in the recording. It's very hard for me, though, to listen to my <laughs> Well, we have to do it. Um, yeah. um, well, we told about, uh, we were talking about Jean Batory. Um, there were many composers who, uh, who, who were premiered by her, and there were composers who wrote for her. That's you, at the end, you had a wonderful song as an encore of a composer who wrote for you. Who for was me, that? Yes, yeah. that was a song by Osvaldo Golijov. Oh. A, a, a spectacular That was lullaby. really the end. There could nothing come coming more, I think. Yeah. No encore. No, no. Actually, I, I, I never thought I would sing another encore after that because it's a rather big piece and it's a lot anyway to ask the audience to stay and listen to one more four minute song. Yeah. Um, so there are composers who are writing for you. Um, how is it in America? Are there young composers who are still writing um, songs, uh, classical songs? Like that? Yes, there are many. There are many young composers writing for voice and piano and other combinations. Um, but there, are, there is a tremendous um, group of, of different styles in, in which they're writing. Um, what it's kind almost, of I think, almost um, seems like it's a time of searching or something because there's no true, I don't feel there's any real American style 
right now. Oh no! I've, no, I feel like there I'm, was in the okay. times of Ives and and and. Well, uh, yes. Copeland, I mean, I, I think, think are... I think that they came Copeland and Bernstein and Barber. Um, Minotti uh, also. As, um, no, Minotti. Maybe Minotti. He was a little, a little bit different school, I yes, think. But sir. and and they all shared. Um, those other composers shared uh, certain certain traits. Yeah, I think. And also because Copland said American music is very important, isn't it? Oh yes, and I think so too. <laughs> yes. I guess what I mean, I don't mean to to. I, I guess I couldn't pinpoint what it is that makes something American That's today. True. That's what I mean. Um, there are wonderful American composers out there. It's just that they're all so very different from one another. Yeah. Are, are, are the composers still writing in, in the style like the songs of Webern anymore, the, the uh, 12th there, tone? There are some. I don't find very many of those. Um, I'm not sent that music too often. Um, I myself, well, it depends, you know. I can't say that I'm not interested in 12-tone music because what sometimes 12-tone music is extremely moving, and, it, yeah. and if, if some that's that's awesome. what it comes down to. It comes down to whether I'm touched in some way. Yes, there is one composer on your um, on, on this record. Yes. Uh, and that's that's uh, John Harbison, isn't it? Oh yes. Okay. John, I've forgotten that we put some of John's music on that disc. Yeah. Yes. He, this would be from the Mirabai songs. Of yeah. John that, that's a song, not with piano, but with orchestra. It's a small chamber ensemble. Yeah. Yeah. You you did also before I forget that uh, Crump, isn't it? George Crumb. Yeah. Yes, I've done a few. Pieces yeah, he's a George special Graham. composer too. Yes, and he's he's but better known, it seems, here in, here, in Europe. I, yeah. I, did a, and in Amsterdam. I did a seven hours live radio show with him. You did? With all the music, yes. He's a nice guy. Wow. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, he yes, is. Sure. He's very but now, sweet. Let's go back to John Harbison. Um, here we have one of, of these songs, and uh, let, let's listen to it. Okay. Is this American music? I don't know. I, I think you. Don't I guess know. it is because it's written by an American. <laughs> <laughs> There's another American. Let's listen to it. Go from one mood to the other. <laughs>
That's what you like also, isn't it? Johnny Mitchell, we, we can put it under our another, voices a another little bit. Another great, great American composer, <laughs> Johnny Mitchell. Yes, she is, yes. I grew up listening to a lot of Joni Mitchell and to this recording in particular, this, this record. And uh, did, did it influence your way of singing a little bit or? I think so. I, along with Joni Mitchell, I, my parents were very interested in folk music and I, of course, was growing up during the uh, 60s. You were, you were um, a singing family, wasn't it? Yes, we sang together. <laughs> it was during the civil rights movement in the United States and we were singing songs um, at schools, at like elementary schools for students to send an important message about what was going on at the time and about human rights. And uh, so I grew up with this idea of the message and certainly Joni Mitchell's messages are you know, what it must be what inspire her and in, in, in her wonderful music that comes out of that. Um, so I, I think that it, it was kind of an interesting launching point for me in terms of the classical road that I ended up taking primarily. But sometimes there's Joni Mitchell here behind in, in, in your Oh, hand. Joni Mitchell is with me at home all the time. You're, you're, you're a still? player in the kitchen and I even travel with, with Joni Mitchell CDs. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. No, I haven't lost my, uh, my interest there at all. Uh, I think it's time um, for our small masterclass now. Um, what do you try to give the people who are attending your masterclass? Well, I think for, of course, I think of it as being primarily for the, the singers themselves somehow, I, I, even though the room is full of people listening. Um, I guess the message is, the, maybe I can give you some new ideas about how to work on music and how to try to come to the point where you are offering something freely of yourself as a performer um, and trying to be true to what the composer has That's asked. very important for you, to be true to the composer. Cer certainly. Yeah. I think that that's where it all begins and uh, you know, sometimes I talk to people in the master class about how obviously this white page with black markings on it here. This is just a guide and just the beginning, um, this music. And what we have to try to do is go much deeper than that to get to the heart of, of what the composer's message. Yeah. Well, they are here now in the studio. Um, Tanya Cross and uh, Ernst uh, Munnike. Tanja, um, voordat je gaat zingen, en we vinden het fantastisch dat je hier bent. You know her, I think. Yes, I heard Tanja the other day, and I'm so glad that she could come and join us. Um, and and yeah. Ernst, too. <laughs> um, uh, even voordat je gaat zingen, ik, dat is altijd moeilijk om even te praten, toch wil ik het even aan je vragen. Um, je hebt Stravinsky gekozen, Rex Progress, wat niet echt meteen voor de hand ligt om te gaan doen. Waarom heb je dat gedaan? Nou, ik heb dat gedaan omdat ik uh, volgend jaar deze rol van Baba de Turk Waar? uit uh, de, de Reeks Progress moet gaan zingen Zo. in Berlijn en in Manchester uh, samen met uh, Jacques van Steen. En ik dacht, uh, het is zo'n stuk dat je zoveel moet kwebbelen en, en, en moet zingen. En ik denk dat uh, mevrouw Opshaw daar mij heel goed mee kan helpen. Well, she, she said that, that she, she likes that you can help her. Don with, with this song and now well let's we'll see, see what happens now. <laughs> uh, I'll sing and then and then I think you have to go to her perhaps. But that, I will, that, shall I? Yeah. I'll stay here when while she's singing. Yeah, and then and then, then, then then you do what you want. She'll sing and it for it's, us. It's once. for you now. The okay. Thank you. 
musical glasses that was in Vienna. No, it must have been Milan because of the donkeys. Vienna was the Chinese fan. Oh, was it a bottle of water from the river Jordan? I'm certain at least it was Vienna and Lord Gordon. I get so confused about all my travels. This no box escape from Paris and no fool in this gravels from a Comadino who admired me vastly in Rome. You're not eating, my love. Count Moldau gave me the note and Prince Abolovsky the little statues of the twelve apostles, which I like best of all my treasures, except my fossils, which reminds me I must have bridged it never to touch the mummies. I'll trust them myself. She can do the waxwork dummies. Oh, of course, I like my birds too, especially my great hawk, but the moths will get in them. My love, what's the matter? Why don't you talk? What's the matter? Speak to me. Come, sweet, come. Why so glum? Smile at Baba, who loving smiles at you. Do not frown, husband dear. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really. And Ernst. That is tricky. <laughs> isn't, that, tricky. <laughs> isn't that difficult? Oh, that's, I would, first of all, I want to say that whenever you get to your first rehearsal, that you work with the conductor and you can take a bit more time in certain places yes. and make this more your own and not feel like you have to follow so strictly the tempo constantly, yes, yes. you know, but to, to help give you shape um, and, and to get this character across. And this character, the, uh, you're doing a wonderful job um, already. And I would just add my own feeling that Baba is, oddly enough, one of the nicest people of course, in this opera, yes, because yes. <laughs> there is so the, some of the other characters um, are so flawed, yeah, and even though this is a woman with um, a, a bearded lady in most productions <laughs> yes. and obviously loves her possessions, yeah. she still has true feelings, and so when you get to that middle section. Um, Oh, uh, why are you so glum? Yes. Um, calm, yes. sweet, calm. This, this section, in fact, if there was anything that I thought you could work on the most, it would be defining the differences between the sections more so that there's yes. more contrast. And one of the first ways you can do that is by really personalizing this middle section. And really sincerely, you know, oh, calm, sweet, calm, 
Why so glum? Smile, yeah. you know, and and really heartfelt. I mean, this is yeah. really important. All of this is very important to her, but she wants to make the best of things with him. Wants so, to be a good wife. Yes, yes, and she wants him to be happy. She really yes. does. Um, she has a temper, and when he <laughs> shoves her away right after that section, yes. of course, that sends her into this Rage. tirade. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I would take more time with that. And in the first section, uh, I would even, you know, it's difficult because the orchestra has to keep this steady yes. rhythm. But you're doing wonderfully. And the main thing is to find a tempo in the beginning that will allow you to say all of these rather strange words um, in, in talking about your possessions as clearly as possible. possible. Okay. Yes. Um, and to exaggerate even more, which, uh, you're already doing it a little bit, but for instance, I mean, you we ask ourselves, uh, why did Stravinsky choose to set this this way? Um, let's see, hold on, let me find this. For instance, a gesture like yes. this. Um, he says, I must tell Bridget never to touch the mummies. I'll dust them myself. She can do the waxwork dummies. Oh, of course. Um, all of these kinds of gestures where there are big leaps um, or uh, obviously all of the chatter, I would make much more of that. I would exaggerate them because mm. this is your personality and this is the character coming yes. through. Uh, here... Uh, love, what's the matter? Why don't you talk? Use the rests, yeah. not just as a place to find out where you're not supposed to be singing, <laughs> yeah. but also to emphasize her new ideas. It takes time sometimes to think of a new idea. Yes. So use these pauses um, as, the, as an opportunity for that. Okay. Um, Sometimes, when you begin the tirade, the, depending on what conductor you have, you can stretch these as yes. well in time. Um, I, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the English. Um, there was something that is in Young, demure, delightful, clever. clever. Is, she is she not? Can you just read for me um, from Not As I? Not as I, that is what I know you sigh, then sigh, then cry, for she, your wife, shall never, shall never, never be. be. Don't forget about this rallentando yes. at the end. You can really slow this down. <laughs> Yeah. And then he either will throw a, a blanket over your head or he'll do some other such thing. Um, I'd, like, I'd love to go back and work a little bit yeah. on the beginning section. Okay. You must know a lot of people who get a thought in their minds and begin chattering. Yeah. And Forget that you're there. Do you know anybody <laughs> like that? I won't mention any names. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. You're on television. Yeah. So that's true. Um, I think if I could ask you just for now to imagine yourself as one of these characters, um, the beginning section was a little more presentational than yeah. I think it needs to be. So it's more that each idea, each of her possessions that she's speaking about brings about a totally new memory of how she received yeah. that gift <laughs> and who gave it to her and did she like that person or did she have a difficult time with that man? <laughs> um, so that every gift has a different color in a sense. Yes. Now it's not something you can just whip up like that in two minutes for us <laughs> but it's something to to think, think about. about. Yes. Instead of a, laund a grocery list 
of, <laughs> yeah. of these possessions. Have a story for yourself behind each one of them so that even if we don't know the details, uh, we know that you've had some either marvelous or, you know, terrible time um, yeah. in that experience. Okay? And then, of course, you've been going on and on and on and on, and that's why you didn't notice that your he's husband, not eating. he's yeah. not eating, he's not paying attention to yeah. you, he's miserable. Okay, maybe we'll, maybe we'll be able to get into that section. So if you would start at the beginning, you're doing a wonderful job. This is, of course, not ever intended um, <laughs> no. when written to be played at the piano, at that particular <laughs> instrument. Um, so um, all I can say is continue with what you're doing. It's great. Great. And it's, if, you, if we can imagine that all the memories are somewhere up here in space so that when you come back down to earth oh. to him, that he's in a very different place ah. for you. Yes. Okay. And everything else is, is up here and is flying <laughs> and he keeps bringing you back down to reality. Yeah. Okay. THs. But mm. the. the. Th if, 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 the. Great, great. <laughs> I can do it like that. Singing yes, and is singing difficult. is hard. I yes. know, it's a difficult yes. sound. Um, what, what you might try is vocalizing on that from, from voice range, speaking range. Oh. Um, work on it that way. Th th mm. And then slowly try bringing that sensation up oh, into yes. the range you're singing yeah. in. Okay. Um, and, and the only thing is donkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Instead in don donkeys, it's a little more, too open ah. and um, should be donkeys. 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 Because of the donkeys. Almost, almost like my name, Dawn. Donkeys. donkeys. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and I wish that we had more time. Yes. Um, I think that you're wonderful and you have so much to offer. Thank you very much. Everybody who's going to hear you and watch you perform. So all I would say as a final little comment is don't be afraid to give of yourself. Now that you have learned all of the rules of singing, uh, yes. you know, <laughs> and you have learned the part and you sing all the rhythms at the right time and the pitches in the right place, really take that next step and have confidence in yourself because you have so much to offer to to personalize it. Yes. Yeah. Thank and you. Make very it yours. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Ernst. <laughs> yeah, um, that was uh, een hele kleine masterclass. En uh, ik denk dat veel mensen die dit zien graag uh, zangers bij Don in de in de masterclass zouden zitten. You, have you done masterclasses? I've done I've I've been doing more and more. I uh, I do probably about half a dozen a year. But yourself? Oh, have I? Yeah. Have, oh, yes. So I know how terrifying it can be. Uh, in fact, Ellie Ameling was one of my first master class teachers. I sang for Ellie Ameling in New York, in Greenwich Village, and I was 
shocked but delighted to see her at the concert last night. And uh, I reminded her, although she doesn't remember, that I think 17 or 18 years ago I sang for her in New York as a student. And, and how was it, to, to, what, what, what is it to do as, as, an, as, a, as a pupil to go to a master class like that? Well, I think that there are some things that are difficult about it and maybe even disappointing uh, because both, both for the student, I think, and the teacher, um, it's such a short amount of time to try to make a real difference. Uh, what we generally can do is it, it gives the, the teacher an opportunity to throw out some general ideas, very general ideas about the way he or she works. Yeah. And for the student, it gives them an opportunity to sing in front of people, which is so important early on, to get to know yourself so, in yeah. front of an audience, because you're very different uh, as a performer than in your practice room. Yes. And that's a difficult transition to make. Um, it's, you, it's, it's, a, it's a different animal out there, you know? <laughs> um, so you have to learn about yourself as a performer. Let's watch. We have six minutes to go. Perhaps we can talk a little bit about Goretzky. Sure. You have met him. Yes, I've met him a few times. The first time was to record the Third Symphony. Yeah. Did you expect that it would be, would be on the top ten? No. No, in fact, <laughs> you know, <laughs> classical records, unfortunately, don't sell that well. No. You know, certainly compared to, to popular records. How was it to popular. work with him? It was very unusual and, and special. He, he was a very quiet man. And of course, there was a translator there for us. He was speaking Polish. He was then. speaking Polish. And, and he seemed almost shy. And I thought that he would sit down and say, OK, let me, let me hear you sing this, and I'll help you um, give you some ideas. But he didn't want to do that at all. Uh, in fact, he sort of crept over to the piano and sat down and be, just, just began playing, even before I was sort of mm. ready, and hummed and groaned. And just like he did, it, we, we have him humming and growing here. You do? Yes, we have. You have the humming have and groaning. Solches cantabile, mol, adagio molto, molto cantabile. And that's Reimert Leeuw, it's a oh, film yes. of Sherry Duns and, and Reimert Leeuw about Koretsky. So that was the way he was humming. Exactly. <laughs> well, and I was just watch, and watching that reminded of the pain, you know, that you could see in his face. Yes. Uh, every note was an expression of, of that pain you know, in that particular section, the first section. And so um, that, that just put the music in a totally different place for me. Uh, I, when I think about how differently I might have sung that, if I hadn't heard him moan through it a couple days before we recorded it, yeah, you know, it, it, um, I mean, it affected me, so. Um, we have 
well, we have to close the program uh, in, in a moment and uh, we have to say goodbye. Um, there, speaking about American music and American songs, there are, and I think American is rich because of those beautiful songs of Sondheim, Rogers mm. and Hart, uh, Bernstein, uh, Gershwin. Uh, that's it true, isn't it? It comes from our American music theater. That's really American music, yes. isn't it? Speaking oh, about it, yes. Yes, definitely. And you like to sing that also. That's, uh, when I went to college, that's what I thought I was, that's what I was hoping I would do. I went to, I went to college, Broadway? yes, I wanted to sing on Broadway. Is that and true? I was required at the school that I attended, I, I had to take some music history courses and uh, study Western music, the history of Western music and classical music. And um, I took another road, you know, but, but I still, I get back to this music now actually more often than I ever would have thought and have recorded some of it. Yes. Uh, you re recorded Rogers and Hart, um, th 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 this, this one, um, mm -hmm. but I think Sondheim is another one, isn't it? Sondheim, I, I did some Sondheim on a disc called I Wish It So. I Wish It So, mm. and I think it's good to end with that kind of American culture, because it is, it's a very, for me, it's an imp important part of American culture. So, I'd like to thank you very much that you were oh, here. And you, have Han. a good trip back to, in an hour you have to go back to the, to the States. And you well, I like go that. on to London first and then, and then, and then back to the, back States, to the States, States in a few days. So, let's listen both to Stephen Sondheim. Right. There you are. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a hero doesn't come to the nick of time. Even say that I care. All I know is the minute you turn, and he's suddenly there.